sorry guys, I had to re-record part two. So here it goes, part two, picking up where I left off. So he's on the ground. He is just checking every nook and cranny on the airplane. He's got his face right up against the landing gear. He's running his fingers around trying to find stuff. And he actually found a small brake le fluid leak, but that was no big deal. So he wrapped that up. Um, I said, hey, is it okay if I start my pre-flight? He said, absolutely, go ahead. And, you know, we always hold our checklist in our hand and, and uh, we know what to look for in our pre-flight at this point. But I'm going over line by line and I'm reading it out loud so that he can... He can hear me and stuff. He he followed me around. He was on his phone a little bit. He uh, only two questions he asked me during the pre-flight portion were, um, what color to look for, what would be different looking in the fuel, um, when I when I check the fuel on the right wing, um, and then how much oil um I'm looking for on the oil stick. Those are the only two questions he asked me. So I do a thorough walk around uh, pre-flight check. Um, he runs to the restroom, runs to get his headset real quick. I pulled the airplane out and we're, we're going to go. So we get in the airplane and I had made up this nice laminated safety briefing card, you know, with the safety on it and we start going over it and I'm still nervous at this point, but as I start asking the questions and going through the checklist or, or going over the safety briefing, all of a sudden I just felt super calm, cool, and collective. Like I, I knew what to do. I'd been here before. Um, let's just go. So he made it very clear to me that, you know, I was pilot in command and a positive change of controls during certain maneuvers during the test would happen. Um, we went over that briefly and we went, so we taxied over, we did our pre-flight check. Um, one of my mags, I think it was my left mag was running a little rough and I was like, uh Oh, hopefully we don't have to discontinue this, but I cleared it off and, um, he never even brought it up. So we started with a, um, soft field departure, uh, that went without hiccup. We departed, uh, did a downwind departure for the first, um, leg of my, uh, first leg of my, I can't think now. Cross-country flight. There you go. Thank you. And uh, so we did that. Um, hit my first checkpoint right at seven minutes. No problem. He asked me, hey, how much, how far to your next checkpoint? Oh, 10 minutes, you know, however many miles. He's like, all right, cool. So we're done with that. And then he said, uh, I have a scenario um, simulation. So cool. I knew it was coming now. He said, oh, oh, I just looked out and I noticed that the uh, right fuel cap is coming loose. Oh, uh oh, it's gone. Uh, what are you going to do? So... I quickly went to my Ford flight. I tabbed my distance and I said, okay, let's go back to the airport that we just left from. It's a home airport. We're familiar with it. Let's go there. He said, fair enough. He said, fair enough a lot. That's how I knew things were going well. Um, got the heading, uh, the distance and the fuel burn, uh, gave that information to him. And I said, let's do a left turn since the right fuel tank is now open there. There's no cap. Let's do a left turn. Um, he said, cool. So I started my left turn and he was like, are you sure that's all you want to do? And I was like, no, no, I want to switch over to my left fuel tank. <laughs> so I reached down, switched over to my left fuel tank, uh, made the fuel pump was on. No problem. Got about you know, 30 seconds into the heading towards back, back towards the airport. And um, he's like, all right, uh, scenario's over. Good job. He's like, so let's go ahead and do uh, some hood work. I have controls. He has controls. I reach back. I grab my foggles. I put them on. Just did the standard standard rate turns, uh, some climbing and descending um, in standard rate turns with the foggles on. He gave me a scenario of, you know, you're on, we're on 360. Um, you're flying into the clouds. Uh-oh, what do we do? Obviously, standard rate turn back to 180. Um, I did that. Uh, he said, oh, oh, we're still in the clouds. Now what are you going to do? Descend, descend. Perfect. Descend down to 3,500, which I did. Then he put me through one um, unusual attitude, and it was a unusual attitude which ended up in a high uh, climbing right turn. So of course I corrected for that. He asked me what I felt, and I told him, you know, I could feel the G's when we went to the from a descent to back to a climb. I felt the G forces, and he was like, "Great, those are the kind of things you're looking for as far as the feelings go." So that was good. Um, we stopped that and then we went right into a power on stall. Now this particular DPE uh, is very particular. He wants you at full power in a full stall. I mean, you know, full stall. So that was kind of cool. I had been practicing that um, on my solo check ride prep flights. So I was ready for it. Um, 
then we went right into steep turns uh, did one steep turn to the left now i had been practicing steep turns i had never really been comfortable with them up until a couple of weeks before doing them solo because again confidence builder right and um, nailed the left steep turn uh did i maybe lost 20 feet if that um rolled out right on my heading and i was expecting to go right into the right steep turn but um he never did he said great let's do uh what do we do after that having one of those moments oh power off stalls so i picked my point you know did my checklist uh did a power off stall no problem uh, so slow flight power on steep turns power off then he said okay so take me where you normally do your um ground reference maneuvers so i immediately made that turn to the north side of the lake uh where we use a canal started to descend from 3500 i was on my way to a thousand oh and the other thing i want to say is when you do your maneuvers just talk it out that's what he's looking for um perfect example you know when i went into my power on stall i I said to him, all right, so this is a power on stall. We're going to be simulating a, a stall on takeoff. We're going to come back to 65, which is our takeoff speed. Um, we're going to go full power, climb in the stall, recover, you know, don't drop too much on the power off on the power on stall, you know, start climbing again. just explain everything that you're doing. Because like he said, no maneuver is going to be perfect. But if I hear that you are correcting for it and you see it coming and, and you know the mistakes you're making fix it correct it tell me what you're doing and you'll be good to go so again super important just talk it out just get used to doing that um so i found my ground reference maneuver sites um i was on the way there he said all right cool let's do a turn around a point perfect turn around a point i've been struggling with s turns so in my mind yes perfect um he said be very clear to me what spot you're going to pick. So I picked my spot. I told him where it was. And he said, let me know when you're set up and, and you're starting the maneuver. So I, I descended down to 2,000 feet. And um, I'm, I'm sorry, I was descending down to 1,000 feet. I had my point. And as I was coming around to the backside to start the maneuver, I noticed that I lost a visual of it um, because of trees. So I said, uh-oh, I better select another site. So I told him, I said, look, I don't like that uh, site. I've lost visual contact on it on this side of it. I'm going to pick up another one. He said, cool, no problem. Let me know where it is. So I found it, picked it, and did two S turns. So I I'm sorry, turned around a point. So I started my turn, and I was, I was, uh, as I was doing my second one, I look over at him, and he's just sitting there, arms folded, looking out the window, and it's kind of how I knew it was going good. So I'm expecting him to have me do a s turns now but of course the acs says you only have to do one of the two i knew that so he had me power up and uh he said recover and he said okay where do you want to go wherever you want to go to do your landings i had two options i had leesburg which is just on this side you know class d airport which is fine or our home airport so i said well let's just go back to apopka fair enough let's go so he said, get yourself set up. I, pl I plugged in, uh, you know, a popka into the GPS and the uh, my four flight. And he said, let's go ahead and do a soft field landing. So I get over there, enter the 45. It's busy. There's a lot of airplanes in the pattern. You know, just people doing crazy things like they do in, in those kind of airports. And nail my first landing. Uh, we do a full stop taxi back. So I nail my soft field. We come back around again. And he has me do a short field departure because i did my soft field to start do my do my short field departure that was good to go there um climbed up around he said okay let's go back and do a uh short field landing so i had been practicing my short field landings i had a really hard time coming in too fast i always like to come in five knots faster especially here and it took me a good week or two and quite a few attempts at just slowing down, especially for that getting down to the, the 63 and the POH or for short field landings. It's just, I don't like flying that slow. I'd rather have extra five knots, but that's just me. Um, so as we come on the downwind, as we enter the downwind, my sentry starts going off and is giving me a carbon monoxide warning. So now I'm completely distracted. Even he's reaching back, trying to take it off the mount, and he's saying, okay, these things don't just go off that easily. So he's working with that, and I, I enter my final while I decide to go around, just because I was distracted by that. I had to do a go around anyways, right? And so I wanted to go back around and reset myself up. 
So I come back around again for my short field landing, no problems. He he corrected that thing. Um, go on to final. We get pretty low, maybe 50 feet above the ground, and I decided to go around. I didn't like it. The winds kind of kicked me up real quick off that off that runway and um, the way they come off the trees and the hill there. And so I went around. He didn't say anything. No problem. I went around again, you know, announced my intentions, re-entered the pattern. And I came back around and he said, you can do a full stop or you can do a touch and go. It's up to you. Come back around again, uh, nail the short field landing. I picked my point, hit it perfectly on the mark. And I said, okay, let's just, I'm in my mind. I'm like, let's do a touch and go. Don't want him to throw anything else out at me. Uh, you know, flaps, flaps up. Let's go again. So I knew we still had the um, emergency procedure. I hadn't done that yet. Um, so we climb up. Sentry starts going off again, uh, which was weird. Uh, so he reaches over, turns it off completely at this point. So now we're, I'm going to beam the numbers. He, uh, I already had one notch of flaps in, and he goes, okay, uh, uh, simulation. So I knew something was coming. Uh, uh-oh, your oil pressure just fell back to zero. Oh, the engine's running super rough. What are you going to do? So... <laughs> I uh, start announcing, you know, I'm going to pitch to 73 and find the best place to land. I have a runway right here. Normally, I would start my uh, my um, uh, restart checklist, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to land because I have a runway right here. And he says, fair enough. So I turn to final pretty high, throw in all my flaps, um, start slipping down. And as I'm doing that, I go, okay, under normal circumstances, I'd be 1, 2, 1. 1.5. He's like, I don't, don't even worry about that. We covered that in the oral portion. But I just wanted him to know that I that's what I would do under normal circumstances. So I slip down, nail the landing. It's just beautiful. Uh, we're taxing down to the end, and he goes, okay, let's go back to the barn. So at that point, I'm like, oh, shit, uh, I think I did it. And uh, as, as we pull off the end of the runway, he goes, do me a favor. Just don't crash anything. Don't, don't crash into anything between here and there. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting all excited now. So I, I taxi off, I do my checklist. Then it's just conversation. Like he starts talking about the airport and how much it's grown, the hangars that are going in. So I'm super excited. So we taxi over to the taxiway where the hangar is. We I shut the engine down and he's like, hey man, yeah, congratulations, you passed. He's like, I, and I, I kind of do a little nudge to him. I'm like, yeah, I waited 25 years for this. You know, maybe a little tear coming. I don't know. Um, he gets his stuff, he steps out onto the wing, and he squats down, and he's like, you know, the only real thing that I got to say about the uh, the flight portion is, um, you know, on that power off 180, you were a little far out there on the downwind. You could have definitely have been a little bit closer, but I understand why you did it. There were a lot of guys in the pattern, a lot of people doing crazy things. Um, and, and then he says, you know, the other recommendation I have is when you're on... Um, when you're on final, especially on 3-3, uh, you know, try to add five knots to your landing. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, that's what I normally do. And I just spent two weeks trying to slow down. But I took the criticism, obviously. Uh, always good to come in extra five there, especially with the winds and the way the runway is. But I was super excited. He's like, that's all I got for the flight portion. Um, I'll meet you inside, and we'll talk about the uh, oral portion. So we get inside. The one thing that I, I, I stumbled on about the... Um, the check, uh, the, the maintenance checks and inspections. Um, I only gave him the 100 hour inspection and the annual inspection. And he was like, are you sure that's it? And I was like, yeah, that's it. But during the flight portion, he had asked me a question about like the transponder or the altimeter, you know, do those have any inspections? Yeah. As a matter of fact, they do. I told him and he was like, Oh, so there are more inspections. And I was kind of like, I, I see what you did there. So that was kind of cool. Um, that was it. I mean, he wrote aviates, which I knew I just had a brain fart and it is what it is. So again, my advice, you know, he, he wrote out the, uh, I was expecting a paper, uh, temporary, but he couldn't connect to the printer. So he had to handwrite one. He's got the like prescription pad and there it is. Gave it to me. We took pictures. It was awesome. Just my advice. You're going to be prepared for this. Um, don't doubt yourself. You know, the information, um, and just enjoy the ride. It's such an awesome feeling. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them for me in my comments. Uh, please subscribe. Lots more video adventures coming up, I promise. And uh, thank you guys so much for wa for watching this. And um, good luck in your private pilot uh, check ride. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm always happy to help.